Here I'd like to talk about the order of uh, filleting out the rest of this center console. Now, here we have a sharp edge and another sharp edge, and they terminate at the same point. Now, the way to look at these is you need to have at least one fillet that is going to drive over the top of another fillet, which makes the most sense. In this case, as I look at this, I see that this edge runs along the entire length, and then this eventually comes into this edge. This is a secondary feature. This is the primary feature that needs to be applied. So in this case, the right way to do this, the right way to build this, is to create this blend out first, and then have this blend out come in secondly. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and there's a tool here. Let me bring it into view. It's called Quick Select. So I'm going to Quick Select this. Now, I have a sweep here that is driving this wall, but it's not that sweep that I want to go after. If you look at that sweep, it's made from a combine. If I go to Parent Children at Combine, I have a couple of curves. I have a curve down here and I have a curve out here. Well, if I go to this curve, show parent children, I also have this extrusion. It's this extrusion that I want to use when making my tangent curves. And the reason why I want to use this extrusion rather than this angled face is when I come down and through in this area here, this extrusion is what's driving this edge as it runs all the way straight and through. If I use that angled face back there, what will happen is, is that angled face, when I do the offset, it's going to have an angle that's going to run down, and there's going to be no relationship to the front. So that's why I use this extrusion. So I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to do my offset. We'll go 4 mils. We'll go both sides. Select OK. Now the next thing I need to do is generate some tangent curves. So I'm going to go parent children on this. There's my sweep. I show that. And then do an intersection. I'll do the same thing for the top. And do an intersection. Now that I have that, next thing I need to do is generate my initial blend. So I'll just go into blend. I want to blend from here to here. And I'll pick way over here. Curvature, tensions, I'll just go to default. I'll just say default here and here. And create my initial blend. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hide that for now. And I'm going to hide this. And I'm just going to simply double click on this. This is a split. And I'm going to add this offset in there as part of my split. Now I'm getting this lay down operator error. And the reason why I'm getting this lay down operator error, and I wanted to show you this, is because when I made this multi section surface, I used that split for one of the inputs. And this is why I like to go back to the base elements. So for this for this split, if I go back and bring up this um, let me go parent children. I show. Whoops. If I go back and edit this multi-section surface, you'll notice that guide or I'm sorry, not guide, but uh, section number 1 is pointed to that split. What I want to do is I want to replace the support with this. Select OK. And that's one of the reasons why I always go back to the base elements, is because those base elements, if, if you can, are the most stable elements. So if you do modifications like I just did, you don't end up with potential failure. So I'll double click on this and add this in as part of my split. Say other side, select OK. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to take create 
a couple of more intersections. Now, if we look at this, this element is a multi-section surface itself. So that's the base element, which is fine. So I'm going to do my intersect to that. Next is this element. I know this element is made from a blend, so I'll hide show that blend and do my intersect to that. Next thing I need to do is I need to create the frame that this sits around. Basically, I need a curve up here on this blend, and I need a curve down here to finish this off. So let me go ahead and hide this. Let me go ahead and hide that. Next thing I need is for this curve up here to be made. And if I just do something like that, I remember I created a plane here for that curve. So again, I'll just do an intersection. I want to intersect this plane with my blend. There's that curve. And then lastly, what I need is to define this edge down here. If I take a look, I have a curve here, and I have a curve here. So these curves, as you can see, go into making these edges. Okay, this, this curve runs all the way up to this point, and then from this point on, it's that line. So what I need to do is I need to split this element back to that point. Again, I don't want to use that initial base element. I have a curve here that's made from an intersect. So I have my, there we go. There's my hide show, hide show that element. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply intersect, or I'm sorry, not intersect, split this element back to this element. Again, very stable elements. I'd show that and then now I'm going to bring back the parent because I don't want to use the split and for this I'll just simply use a fill surface I want to go from that curve sits on the blend I want to go to this curve which sits on this blend I want to go to this split sits on this I want to go to this sits on this and then last but not least I want to go to that notice the closed contour which sits on that surface select OK hide show hide show double click on this split and you'll notice that I have an intersect here I'm going to replace that intersect with this curve whoops I picked the fill and remove that you pick the curve there we go other side select OK and then now this is just simply a split to this element and then this is another split from here to here so as you can see I've created that blend wraps all the way down comes in touches this surface tangent all the way around and it builds actually creates my lead in for this next blend which I'll do in my next video